Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Give Expert. So today we're going to talk about PRP. PRP means platelet rich plasma. So what the general idea is that you that this is supposed to have some healing properties, right? There's lots of growth factors in blood, and so plasma is part of blood. Platelet rich plasma is a specific area of blood. So what happens is you come in and you get your blood taken, right? You typically through here, take your blood out, take the blood, put it in a in a centrifuge and spit it down, and then you get a certain layer of blood, right? There's different layers here, different layers of blood. Uh, and you get a certain layer that's called the platelet-rich plasma layer. You take that layer and then you inject it. Now, does it work? Does it help? Is it going to be a good thing for you? Well, it depends. So let's find out why. And there's lots of good research out there, actually. There's lots of good research, and actually I learned some things when I went through this research, too. When you think about why would platelet-rich plasma help? Why would that be a good thing? And it's sort of akin to stem cells, right? We probably all have heard about stem cells. You take them and those stem cells, we inject it into stuff and hopefully make things happen, make things regenerate, right? So specifically in orthopedics, stem cells inject them in the knee and that, that makes the knee make more cartilage. That sounds great, although it's not exactly true, but that's not what we're talking about today. If you think about the blood and you think about um, bone marrow and all the factors that are in blood, there's lots of healing factors. There's lots of factors that help people heal faster or bring nutrients and sort of that sort of stuff, uh, vitamins kind of things into, the, into play that may help things heal better or faster. When we talk about PRP in the setting of orthopedics, in the setting specifically in orthopedics of shoulder surgery, rotator cuff repairs, I've had a few questions. This is what generated this, this uh, talk. And actually I'm thankful for this because again, I've learned some things going through this. I still have lots of things I can learn, lots of things I need to, to learn about so I can present them to you so you have more information. So when you talk with your doctor, you can talk to your surgeon, you can say, hey, I know about this and that. I know about this and that. Explain to me, tell me what you think because a lot of this is about what your doctor thinks. And so if you agree and you like what your doctor thinks, that's great. If you don't, then have a conversation. And if the conversation goes sideways, then maybe go see another doctor, right? There's two points I think that are crucial when we talk about PRP and whether it can be helpful or not. Uh, one is in a non-operative setting, which means can you inject PRP around a rotator cuff that it's damaged, that's torn, and will that help it heal, right? And so that's one part. And the second part is, can you inject PRP around an area that we have already fixed? So during surgery, we take your blood, spin it down, inject it around a rotator cuff repair. And does that matter? Let's say I fix your rotator cuff and I inject a little PRP around, kind of layer it where the, the tear was, where the repair is, and does it help? And it probably does. So we look at their literature and I'll give you, there's like four papers that I looked at, um, relatively modern papers from 2017 till present uh, of, of some good reasonable studies. Some are meta-analysis. Meta-analysis, we talked about this before. Meta-analysis means it's a study of studies, right? So the people who are doing the meta-analysis look at a bunch of studies and try to explain what those studies together really tell us. And that's important because it gives us more power and more understanding and more clarity of whether this matters or not. So if you have a rotator cuff tear and the rotator cuff, it looks like if it's a bigger rotator cuff tear, if it requires more anchors, double row repair, which is technically not what we're gonna get into, but it, we do this in, in repairs that are bigger. Maybe in bigger rotator cuff tears, it helps them heal better and more completely. And maybe if you have a, a, a tear that you do a single row repair and you do PRP, maybe it helps it better. It maybe helps it repair, heal better and, and stay healed or or repaired better so it doesn't re-tear. So I think there's a, there's a really good thought process idea that if you put PRP in a repair, there's a chance, depending on the circumstance, that it may help heal the rotator cuff. Now, the concern, the problem is in the States, in the US, is that oftentimes that PRP is not paid for by the insurance. 
And so it's difficult um, for me as a surgeon, for us as surgeons to say, hey, you know, we're gonna do a PRP injection also after we fix your repair. It's gonna be 500 more dollars to you in addition to whatever your copay is and whatever everything else is. And so it's a challenging process. And hopefully as more and more data comes along and insurance companies see that there is actually improvement and recover improvements and having not to go back for a second surgery, hopefully that will encourage them to actually pay for the PRP. So it's an intriguing idea for me as a surgeon to think about, okay, well maybe that's an option. The second piece is can you inject PRP into a joint or into the, a tear or around a tear and make it heal. It depends on what the tear is. Is it a full thickness tear? So when we talk again, we talk about the, the ball, the rotator cuff comes across here and attaches to the top of the ball. If the rotator cuff is torn and retracted, PRP is not going to work. In my opinion, there may be opinions out there that somehow miraculously you inject some fairy dust and the PRP allows that tendon to come back over and reattach. Most likely, there's no data to support it, so probably not. So if you have a full thickness tear, and that's the term we talk about, a full thickness tear of the rotator cuff, the likelihood of you injecting PRP and getting the rotator cuff to heal, because it's not where it's supposed to be, getting it to heal is really, really low, maybe impossible. Maybe there's some studies out there that I don't know about, but that's my concern. If you have a full thickness tear, PRP is gonna be expensive, because again, your insurance is not, probably not gonna pay for it, and it's probably not gonna work. So when could it work? Well, it could work if you have a partial thickness tear, right? So if you have a certain thickness of rotator cuff and you're torn part of the way through that rotator cuff, right? Halfway through maybe, something like that. Could you inject PRP into a partial thickness rotator cuff tear on top of that tear and could that work? Could that make, could it heal like that? It looks like it actually have to be a partial thickness tear and not just an irritated rotator cuff. Partial thickness tear, PRP in probably helps it heal more, it probably helps it heal. We can discuss whether or not it will heal on its own anyway, but it looks promising that a PRP injection in partial thickness tear may help it heal faster and more completely than leaving it alone. The other piece is a full thickness tear that you repair and then you put the then you put the PRP on top of it and that actually helps encourage, brings good, what we call good humors, right? Good growth factors in there that helps that heal more completely. And it probably, in certain circumstances, really big rotator cuff with double row or really maybe smaller rotator cuffs with a uh, single row repair, probably the PRP helps some. And that actually, to be honest, is, is not, ex not what I thought um, before I looked at the literature. So I appreciate people brought that up. I appreciate you letting me look at it and, and investigate and bring it to you. So probably PRP helps in full thickness tears if, you, if, if it's repaired, and partial thickness tear if you inject it. And so the biggest con concern that we have is financially, is there enough evidence for me to say, hey, Mr. Smith, pay $500 or $700 to get that PRP injection so that we can fix your rigid account? And that's really the big question. I'm not sure we have the exact answers, but it's promising for a partial, promising for full, in certain circumstances. I hope that helps. So please like this channel. Please subscribe to this channel. I have lots of people that are subscribed that don't know about when we put another video up because you don't have the bell that tells you when we have another video. Out. So if you want to know when another video comes out for this important con content, please put the bell so you know, so you're, you're aware of when another video comes out. Don't forget about our private Facebook group, don't forget about our email newsletter, put info at mybodyprotector.com. We'll put you on the newsletter list. And so you can find out about all the things that are coming up. We will send you an email saying this is the next video coming up. So hopefully it helps. Have a good night.